All right, today we are going to continue our discussion of acids and bases by talking about strong and weak acids. So we're going to cover section 14 and 15. Okay, so uh, when we're talking about strong acids, focus on the solution components and their chemistry. So when we look at one molar of HCl, this really means that we have H plus and Cl minus ions, not HCl molecules, because a strong acid will completely dissociate, which means break apart into its ions. Okay, so we want to try to find the major species. So these are the solution components that are present in large amounts, things that are going to influence the calculations. So for one molar of HCl, our major species are H+, Cl-, and H2O. In a very acid, because this is a very acidic solution, OH- is present in very tiny amounts, and so we would call it a minor species. So to calculate the pH of one molar of HCl, the H plus comes from the dissociation of HCl and the autoionization of H2O. And so since HCl is a very strong acid, it drives equilibrium to the left because it's totally breaking apart. And so if we look at the pH um, of this one molar solution, it's negative log of H plus, which is the negative log of 1, which is 0. Okay, because we're, our H plus from the HCl is going to be more important than the H2O. So let's look at an example calculating the pH of one molar of HNO3. Okay, so we've got our major species, our H plus, NO3 minus, and H2O. But since this is a strong acid, the uh, concentration of H plus from the HNO3 is going to be much more important than from the H2O. And so we're only going to look at the HNO3. So pH is equal to negative log of the H plus concentration, which is equal to negative log of 0.1. And negative log of 0.1 is equal to 1. Okay, let's calculate the pH of 1 times 10 to the neg negative 10 molar of HCl. Well, our major species are H plus, Cl minus, and water. Now, because this concentration is so tiny, the concentration of H plus from HCl is going to be almost negligible. So we're only going to look at the water. And so um, the pH of water is 7. And so because the H plus is coming mainly from the water, this is the pH for that solution. Now let's look at how to calculate the pH of weak acid solutions. Okay, there are several steps, so we'll go through them and then we'll apply them to an example. First you want to list the major species, just like we did for strong acids. Then you want to choose the species that can produce H plus and write down the equations for those reactions. So using the values of the equilibrium constants for the reactions that you've written, decide which equilibrium is going to dominate in producing H+. And you then you use that to write the equilibrium expression for that dominant equilibrium. Then we go through ICEs. We list the initial concentration. We figure out the change, or the X. And we write the concentration in terms of X. So that's the ICE that we did before. Then we substitute um, those concentration terms into the equilibrium expression. And we solve for x the easy way, assuming that the initial concentration minus x is approximately equal to just the initial concentration. But we have to check this, so once we have found x, we use the 5% rule to verify whether this approximation is valid. And then we can calculate H plus and the pH. So let's apply this to an example. Okay, it says the hypochlorite ion, which is OCl minus, is a strong oxidizing agent found in household bleaches and disinfectants. It is also the active ingredient that forms when swimming pool water is treated with chlorine. In addition to its oxidizing abilities, the hypochlorite ion has a relatively high pH for protons and forms the weakly acidic hypochlorous acid, HOCl, with a Ka value of 3.5 times 10 to the negative 8. Calculate the pH of a 0.1 molar aqueous solution of hypochlorous acid. Alright, step one, list the major species. Because it's a weak acid, it's going to remain mostly undissociated, and so our major species are HOCl and H2O. 
Step two, choose the species that produces H plus and write balanced equations. Well, both P species are going to produce H plus, so we need to write equations for both of them, including their K values. So for our first equation, we have K 3.5 times 10 to the negative 8. And for our dissociation of water, we have the KW of 1 times 10 to the negative 14. Okay, step three, decide which equilibrium will dominate. Well, since HOCl is a stronger acid than H2O, it's going to dominate, and we can see this from K values. So let's go back a minute. Here are our Ka values. Ka for HOCl is larger, and so it is a stronger acid. So it will dominate in the production of H+. Okay, step four. We write the equilibrium expression based on the one we chose that will dominate. And so Ka for HOCl is 3.5 times 10 to the negative 8. Here are our products. And here's our reactant. So this is similar from, to what we did before. Look at step 5 through 7, which is the ICE. So here we've got our reaction for our dominant um, as our proton producer. ICE, our initial, we know we had 0.1 molar of HOCl and 0 of our products. Because we're going to say that X is equal to the change in concentration of HOCl, and this is minus x plus x plus x, and our equilibrium is 0.1 minus x, x, and x. Okay, step 8 through 9 is to substitute those equilibrium expressions into the Ka and solve. So here is our x from our H plus and our OCl minus, and here's our expression from our HOCl. Since Ka is so small, we're going to assume a small value for x, and so we can approximate that the initial concentration minus x is equal to just the initial concentration, and that would be the HOCl, which is 0.1. And so substituting that in, we get an x value of 5.9 times 10 to the negative fifth. Okay, we just did some algebra to solve that. Okay, let's go on to step 10, step, step 10 which is using the 5% rule. We need to compare x to the initial concentration of HOCl. So here's the general form, and then we're writing it specifically for our reaction. Our x value that we calculated divided by the initial concentration of HOCl times 100 gives us 0.059%. Well, since 0.059% is less than 5%, we would say our approximation is valid, and we can use 5.9 times 10 to the negative fifth for our value for x. Okay. Last step, calculate concentration of H plus and the pH. So since concentration of H plus is equal to X, it's equal to 5.9 times 10 to the negative fifth over. We know that pH is equal to the negative log of H plus, and so that's equal to the negative log of 5.9 times 10 to the negative fifth, which is 4.23. Okay, let's look at the last concept of this section, which is percent dissociation. This is the amount of weak acid that has dissociated in achieving equilibrium in aqueous solution. So we're looking at how much weak acid has actually dissociated. So it's equal to the amount dissociated divided by the initial concentration times 100. Okay, so for a given weak acid, the percent dissociation increases as the acid becomes more dilute. And so in general, for solutions of any weak acid, HA, the H plus concentration decreases as the initial concentration decreases, but percent dissociation increases. So it's kind of almost an inverse relationship. So let's calculate the percent dissociation of acetic acid with a Ka value of 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth in each of the following solutions. Okay, so in the first we have one molar of acetic acid. Okay, so first let's write our Ka expression. So Ka equals 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth, and that equals, if this breaks apart, and we're assuming weak acid, it's H plus plus C2H3O2 minus. So this is equal to concentration of H plus times concentration of, of C2H3O2 minus divided by concentration of HC2H3O2. Okay, well, let's set up our ICE. You know, we initially have one molar, 
zero, zero, if we say the change is the change in concentration of the acetic acid, it's minus x, plus x, plus x. So we have one minus x, x, and x. If we also make the approximation that since k of a is very small, that this is approximately equal to one, then when we plug in here, we get x times x over one. And so we multiply that one into 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. And so if we take the square root to get our x value, 0.00424. So now let's check that approximation by taking our x value divided by our initial value, which was 1, times 100. So we take that. You should get, as you're going to move your decimal to places, 0.424%, which is much less than 5, so that approximation is okay. So now if we want percent dissociation, that's equal to the dissociated concentration, so 0 0.00424 divided, okay, divided by the initial concentration of 1, and so that gives us 0. Point, oh, and times 100 gives us 4.424% dissociation. All right, let's look at the percent dissociation of a point one molar solution. So we have the same Ka value. Okay, we're going to say that Ka is equal to 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. And this is equal to the concentration of H plus and the concentration of C2H3O2 over HC2H3O2. Okay, well this time instead of starting with one molar, we're starting with 0.1. So we have x, x, and we're going to make the same assumption that 0.1 minus x is equal to 0.1. And so if we solve for x, we need to take 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth times 0.1, and then square root that value, and that gives me an x value of 0.00134. And so if we check our approximation, it does work out okay. And so now to find the percent dissociation, it's 0 0.0014 over our initial concentration of 1 times 100. And so that gives me 1.34% dissociation. So as you can see, as the concentration decreased, the percent dissociation increases. Okay, now let's look at calculating K sub A from percent dissociation. Okay, so for this problem, we've got two species. We have HC3H5O3 contributing H+, and H2O contributing H+. Well, HC3H5O3 is a stronger acid, so it's going to be the dominant. So we can write our expression or our balanced reaction H+. Uh, C3H5O3 minus. So our Ka value is equal to H plus C3O5 H5 oops, O3 over HC3H5O3. Okay, if we do ICE based on this reaction, our initial concentration is 0.1. 0 and 0. If we look at the change as being the change of lactic acid, this is minus x plus x plus x, and so we've got 0 0.1 minus x, x, and x. Now, normally what we would do is take these equilibrium expressions and plug them into the Ka, but we don't know Ka. We do, however, know the percent dissociation. So 3.7% is equal to the dissociated H+, plus, which is our x value, divided by the initial concentration per acid, which is 0.1 times 100. And if we do a little bit of algebra, okay, we should get that our x value is equal to 0 0.0037. So now we can take that x and plug it into our equilibrium expressions and solve for Ka. So Ka is now equal to 0 0.0037, 0 0.0037,
divided by 1.1, one, excuse me, minus 0 0.0037. And so if we solve for that, we get that our Ka is equal to 1.42 times 10 to the negative 4. Okay, so we can also use percent dissociation to solve for Ka. Right, so here are some problems to work on, and we will discuss this more in class. Have a good day.